refactoring trinomials the long way is like... While factoring with my shortcut method is like... This strategy is charming, and it works fine, but there's just a better way to play. I mean factor. I have my own quirky factoring strategy that I've been teaching on YouTube for many years, and thousands of my students will tell you that it completely revolutionized the way that they factor trinomials. Let's check out what this factoring strategy is, as well as how to use it so that you can finally master trinomial factoring. But first, do me a favor and trinomial factor that like button so that other people can discover the strategy as well. All right, so I wanna walk you through this trinomial factoring strategy using a pretty simple trinomial. We have two x squared plus x minus one. The first thing I always ask myself when looking at a trinomial is whether the value of a is equal to one okay the value of a in this example is not equal to one it's equal to two now the fact that that a value is not equal to one is what tells us that we can use this crazy strategy that i'm going to show you right now now regardless of what factoring strategy you choose to use the chances are the first few steps are kind of the same we usually start by looking for two numbers that are going to add to get our b value which is the coefficient in front of the x term which in this case is one okay there's a little imaginary one there so we need two numbers that are gonna to add to give us one, but the two numbers we pick also have to multiply to get us the product of A and C. C is the term in the trinomial that doesn't have an X, okay? So in this case, it's negative one. The product of A and C is gonna be negative two in this case, right? Two times negative one. Okay, so I'm looking for two numbers that are going to multiply to give me negative two while also adding to get one. And so this part of the process is what I think a lot of students struggle with. And like I said, most factoring strategies will require you to do this in some way. And my crazy factoring shortcut is no different. We have to complete this process to get to the crazy stuff. But I'm gonna show you a trick that I like to use that makes this part a little bit simpler. Some people might tell you to start by looking at the addition condition, right? Adding to get one. Uh, well, probably because adding is you know generally simpler than multiplication, but I like to start by looking at the multiplication, okay? I'm gonna show you the thinking I use to come up with the two numbers that are gonna multiply to get negative two while also getting one. So I like to start just by writing out the factors of two. And in, in this case, it's pretty simple. There's only really one and two, right? If I multiply one times two, I'm gonna get two. So that's where I wanna start, right? I know I want negative two, but let's just think about just two for now. In order to multiply to get negative two, one of those numbers is gonna have to be negative. If I make one negative, I multiply by two, I'll get negative negative two, and likewise, if I make two negative and multiply it by one, I'll get negative two. But which one is it? Which one am I going to make negative here? In order to decide, what I need to do is think about which one I would have to make negative in order to add to get one. That's my second condition, right? I need to multiply to get negative two, but I also have to add to get one. What I like to do is just, you know, ask myself, what if? What if I made, you know, the two negative? Well, is one plus negative two equal to one? It is not. So I know that I can't make two negative to make these conditions satisfied. So that leaves me with one. If I make one negative and I add two, I do in fact get one. And if I make one negative up here and I multiply by two, I get negative two, right? So my two numbers have to be negative one, and positive two. Those are the numbers that are gonna satisfy my two conditions. All right, so with this mess out of the way, we can now start all the fun, crazy stuff. And that's where this new exciting strategy is gonna come in. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take those two numbers you picked, the negative one and the two. Ignore all the other stuff. We chose negative one and two as the two numbers that are gonna satisfy our two conditions. So we're gonna write those numbers somewhere on our page. I'm gonna write them right here underneath my trinomial. I've got negative one, and I've got two, okay? Those were the two numbers that we chose. And the strategy that I use randomly divides those two numbers by the value of A, okay? The value of A in our example was two. So we're gonna divide each number that we picked by two, okay? I'm not gonna waste this video talking about why this strategy works. My goal is to just show you a fast and accurate way of factoring a trinomial that sidesteps all the complicated stuff that a lot of teachers like to teach in class. You're not here for that. You're here for something fast and something that's gonna make factoring easier for you, okay? So randomly dividing by the value of A, we get two fractions. And you might be thinking, well, that's not making things easier. Now we have fractions. But I promise if you stick with me here, things are gonna get a lot simpler, okay? We're gonna look at our fractions and we're gonna ask ourselves, are these reduced to lowest terms? The first fraction is reduced to lowest terms. However, the second fraction, two over two, I know I can reduce that fraction, right? I can reduce that to one, but I wanna keep it as a fraction. So I'm just gonna write it as one over one, okay? I've got two 
simplified fractions in lowest terms. Now, sometimes I refer to this crazy strategy as the roundhouse kick method. Some people have started calling it like the tipping over method. The reason I call it the roundhouse kick method and other people call it the tipping over method is because that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna roundhouse kick these fractions. We're gonna tip them over from left to right. Imagine just kind of standing next to this fraction and tipping it over from left to right. We would leave the denominator of two where it is and that negative one, including the sign, is gonna come down and sit next to it. We're gonna do the same thing for the second fraction. The denominator of one is gonna stay where it is. We're gonna tip over the numerator of one. It's gonna land next to the denominator of one. And since that one is positive, we're gonna bring the positive with it. What have we done here? All we've done is created two you know, random pairs of numbers. But these pairs of numbers are gonna become a lot less random in this final step, okay? We're gonna take some brackets and we're gonna place them around each set of numbers, just like this. And we're gonna place an X because we're working with X up here. We're gonna place an X next to the first number in each set of brackets. And you're gonna see that we have a factored form expression right here, okay? We have two X minus one times one X plus one. Now we don't need that one in front of the X, right? I can get rid of that just to have X plus one. 2x minus 1 times x plus 1. This is our factored form expression. Now, if you don't believe me that this is the correct factored form for this expression, you can actually check your answer just by expanding and simplifying, and you're going to see that you do, in fact, get the original trinomial back again. And I promise this is going to work every single time you apply this process. If you have an a value that is not equal to 1, and you follow this process, and you roundhouse kick those fractions after you simplify them, you will end up with the correct factored form expression for the trinomial that you are working with. Now, the key to mastering any new math concept is, of course, practice, which is why I have linked a free worksheet in the description below so that you can join the thousands of students who have finally mastered trinomial factoring. For some more practice with this epic strategy, you're going to want to head over to this video right here, and I will see you there.